that. But a strong argument as to why leadership became of interest or why the interest was renewed um, is because workers become knowledge workers. <coughs> so they, they're not, uh, in Marxist terms, they don't need access to the machine bolted to the factory floor. Uh, they can work for anywhere and they can walk out of the door with a large proportion of fun. Um, corporate knowledge either in their heads or on their hard disks. Um, but going back a bit, management only really came in with the Industrial Revolution, um, which is what, early 19th century? Um, prior to that, it was kind of leadership, more, you know, more people. Um, um, yeah, so management, uh, as we know it, fits with the Industrial Era and sort of ends, ends with it. <coughs> and even um, you know, if, you, if you take the example of farming, um, uh, <coughs> which, is, which precedes engineering in many ways, but, but as soon as uh, the industry got going, um, it became industrialised, you know, with uh, a few exceptions of green and eco farming and uh, organic farming. Um, but um, where am I going with this? <coughs> um, yeah, so you know, it's, it's said that the only difference between a farm and a factory is in the factory the goods go through the machines, and on the farm the machines go over the goods. So you have the, you know, the tractor putting the plough or the fertiliser thing or the seeder or the um, harvester or whatever it is. And probably these days, um, if you take um, the fertiliser spray or the insecticide spray, that's probably controlled by um, a computer in Monsanto head office, wherever that is, uh, which kind of rotates readings on the state of the soil and decides the dose, and the farmer is probably still driving the tractor, <coughs> probably on his mobile phone or surfing the net, looking at goodness knows what. And probably before long, the uh, tractor will be driven by a robot, and so you get a little round thing to cut your lawn that's kind of robotic, and zigzag up and down the lawn, and does it without being pushed or pulled. Or something. I don't see what, what you're saying at the moment, why, why the, the ideas around leadership. Um, well, the, ar the, the argument, the, yeah. yeah. The, the, the sort of interest well, in the, the, argue, the argument is in you managing people. Um, if it's just telling people what to do, you can rely on them wanting or needing to do it because they need access to the machine to be able to add value to something and get a proportion of that back on a wage. Um, and you'll remember the term Ludditism was, was originally the people who went into the factories and tried to smash the machines because prior to that, um, all and cotton making was a cottage industry. So they were very understandably and rationally trying to hold that back and keep 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 more control of it from the workers' point of view. Um, so they roll that forward when the, the knowledge worker with their laptop and their mobile phone sitting in Starbucks or whatever um, doesn't really need the employer in the same sense. So they need to be led. They, the leader needs to give think more about what's in it for the worker than was previously the case, and that's the argument. But, but what I noticed that the first two management theory at work conferences, the, the second one had a much greater emphasis on leadership, and ideas about learning organisations or learning companies were much more in the background. And yeah, I think that What that's you're saying at the moment, it seems they're quite compatible ideas. Really. I think they're, I think they're, they're compatible. Um, and time-wise, learning organisation, learning company came a bit before the renewed interest in, in leadership. <coughs> um, but to, 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 to some extent, the independent streams and leadership kicks in to this argument with the virtualization of organisations of work. And I'm sure, you know, as in my examples of uh, 